All right, I wanted to talk to you guys today about shipping larger long items like golf clubs. So I just sold a set of seven of these golf clubs. And I know that there are people who kind of shy away from those items because they're not sure how to ship them. So I paid $60 for these at a garage sale last year and they've been sitting in my death slash profit pile and I decided to go ahead and list them and I got $170 for them on Macari. So I am going to use these boxes right here that you can get from the post office for free. They are, I'm going to look for a number on here. They make a triangle. Um, it might be 1098M. I'm not 100% sure. So one side is Priority Mail Express and the other side is regular Priority Mail. These are perfect for shipping posters, um, golf clubs, baseball bats. I also have uh, on my eBay store and on Amazon, I'm, I am shipping or selling... Um, they're like decals that go on like a mirror or a glass or you know window, that kind of thing. But they're not, it's like covers your whole window. So if it's like a bathroom window and you want it to be frosted, that type of thing. And they're really long. They fit perfect in these. So one thing with this box though, or these golf clubs is they are a few inches longer than the box. So I wanted to talk to you today about how I Franken box. And these are a little ch more challenging because they're a triangle and they're kind of hard to get in there and and and, um, and cut and stuff. But I wanted just to show you the process that I take in making a box and how you can just take another box. So I got two of these and I'm going to take these two and make one box out of them. And I'm going to do it a little different. I've never done it with these, but because they've always fit in it. Um, but I wanted to just kind of videotape it anyhow. So this is a box resizer. I'm not sure if I'm going to end up using it or not with this, with this project. But what this does is on a normal box, you can adjust this slider and you put it on the edge of the box. So let's say this is like the normal edge. You would put it here and you would roll this roller right here that's got teeth on it and it scores the box so you can fold it over um, and make new flaps for your box. So you cut your box down and, um, and rescore it. So I, mean, I, I use this all the time. I'm actually going to do a video. I don't know if it's going to be this week or next week on the, the tools that I use the most for my reselling business. And that one is definitely going to be the spotlight in it, of course, besides my um, printer and my, my scale. But so um, I'm going to take this box. Let me move this out of the way. First time I'm doing this with, I have a new GoPro camera. And I'm trying to figure out how to set it up so I can record and you guys can still see me. So hopefully as I'm doing this, I don't come out of focus because the camera is like in an odd spot for me right now. But it is, oh gosh, I don't even know. I don't, I don't know my measurements. So I'm going to, it's like this much too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this box and I'm going to use its normal folding. Okay. And I'm going to measure if it's normally folded right here. I'm going to say, okay, I need to go about this much longer than, I know you probably can't see it from right there, but, um, you know, you just want to make sure there's a good enough overlap. So when you tape it, it, you know, you're not like short. So I usually go about two or three inches longer than what I need. And that really, in this case, it brings it to the Y on priority. So I love this. So I used to use scissors cutting stuff all the time. And I got some of these knives, these cobalt knives, that they had them at Lowe's on clearance. And I actually had bought a bunch of these and sent them to Amazon. It's like a jackknife type of thing. It's got all these. It has a razor blade. It's got a knife. Oh, it's got like a serrated edge one. I think that's it, just a three-in-one. And I use this all the time. I like it so much more than using a... Um, 
than using scissors. So I'm going to use the razor blade on it and and it doesn't even need to be perfect although I do have my husband had this in the pile to burn a, root, a yardstick and I was like oh my gosh I need that so I pulled it out um actually I'll just use this to score it or not score it but you know to cut it and I'm going to cut the box probably should remove, remove the one that was underneath that hopefully I didn't cut through that one too and um I didn't and I had the golf club there that wasn't very smart of me okay so I did not cut through all the way so I'm going to do it one more time and push down a little bit more so I have an old cutting mat that my mother had for her sewing projects might be perfect for putting underneath this when I'm cutting like this. So normally when I'm doing a regular box, when I'm doing a regular box, I don't need something underneath it because of the way I cut it. All right, so this is all I need. This much of the box. This much of the box. I'll just put it aside. And I actually use that for um, backing. So if I'm going to sell like a card uh, like a trading card or something like that and I need to put it in between something so it doesn't bend as easily I'll cut that up and use that for that project so it doesn't go to waste so again make sure that the Priority Mail Express is on the inside because you do not want to ship that by accident under that and pay for priority and then they send you a bill for Priority Express so I'm going to put this box together different with it not having all the flaps in the right spot there we go there so this is what I'm going to put this on top of the normal box so here's the normal box sorry for blocking you there I'll get the hang of this recording videos when I'm working on the table thing at some point i will figure it out how to do it without blocking i have to come up with a setup maybe i'll have my husband build a shelf or something for me to put my camera on so you can have a better angle i don't know i'll figure it out i guess um come on box Triangle boxes are always a little odd to put together. They're just not normal. But they have creases and stuff, so you just fold them on the crease, put it together. Okay, so this is together. So what I do is now I'll take this box. I'm going to put the golf clubs. I don't know if I need to protect the golf clubs in the box or not is it okay if they hit each other I mean, people put socks on them in a golf bag right what does that do it's first time selling golf clubs so I'm not 100% sure if I should protect them inside the box and let's hope all seven fit in here so far so good this is a heavy one heavier than the other ones. I think they'll be okay because they're actually fitting in here pretty tightly. There's not going to be a lot of movement. I do have some air bubbles in case I needed them, but I don't think I don't think I need them. They're in there really, really tight. So I'm not going to do anything but just keep them like this. So then you take this and I might have to cut these flaps off. Let's see if it works. And we're going to what they call Franken box, which is taking one box and cutting it to fit another box and making a new box. So, all right, there's that. So now I just need to take my tape and so it 
And being it's the same size, it does kind of start to come off a little bit, but once I put tape on it, it'll be fine. I just want to tape this first part. There. All right, so then I'm going to tape where the box meets, this box meets this box, um, right here on the seam. I'm going to tape it. So I tape it all the way around so it's half and half, half on one box, half on the other. And then, I don't know if it's necessary, but then I always put another piece of tape that's half on the tape, pop, pop, um, top part of that tape, and then half on the box. So I'll go all the way around one more time on the top. And then I actually do it again on the bottom. Just to make sure that the two pieces stay together. And now had I done this on eBay, I would have used my eBay tape. But I sold these on Macari. So I listed them. Sorry. All right tape noise. So I listed them on eBay first and then I used Crosslist it, which I have a video on Crosslist it, and Crosslisted it to Macari. And it was probably maybe five or six hours after I listed them on eBay. And as soon as I hit Macari, I got offers like immediately. And then I had people asking me some questions about if it was a flex shaft or a strong shaft or something like that. I don't know. I didn't, I don't know anything about golfing. So I said, I didn't know. They told me how to check on Macari. Somebody told me how to check. So I did what they said, found out it was an S and added that to my listing on eBay and Macari. And they made an offer of 150 and I was selling these for 189 and I, I countered at 175 and they said that was too high, but I just listed them. So I didn't really want to accept the offer of 150 because there was so many people coming in with questions and, and already offers. So I just said, nope. I, I hung out and waited. And within a couple days, somebody offered me 170 and I accept and I accepted it. Um, so I'm just wondering when you list something. And even if, like, so I paid $60 for these. So even at a $150, that would have been a really good um, ROI. But I didn't, I mean, I, I looked at comps and I really felt confident that I could probably get at least that $175. And I know I ended up taking $170, so it was less. But it got to the point where I was just like, hey, what the heck, you know, $170, $175, $5 difference. I'll take it just so I can be done with it. And, um... And then be done with the questions because there was a lot of questions on these. So these boxes, they don't go together really, really um, easily. Like I feel like they could fall apart. So I always end up taping them just to kind of give them some extra security. So being that it's now going to be long, be interested to see what the shipping is on them, how much it's going to cost to ship them. So I did do free shipping on these. I measured the golf clubs and I made pretend that I was going to be shipping them in this type of a box at this length and put in the price and I can't remember what it said but I kind of built that into the price of my golf clubs and I felt pretty comfortable that it wasn't going to cost me like a really expensive amount to ship these. Now using, using lots of tape. But I would rather tape a lot and have this stay secure than have it fall apart. And there is a slight movement in there. I'm wondering if I should have bundled them and bubble wrapped them together at the end. Very slight movement. Hopefully that's okay. But um, all right, so I have my scale here. So I set up a new setup. I, I love this big open desk area where I can do some work now. I just did this in the last couple months with our quarantine closed in our house. 
I took the time to reorganize my office and have this new space here now. As you can see, I got my lights, so I had a table over there that was just a card table, and I moved it to this larger table. This weighs 6 pounds and 14, well, 13.3, so 614, I'm going to say. 614, and let's see how long this is with that extension on it. 614 and it's 42 and a half inches long 614 all right 42 and six and a half wow that's long 42 so we'll see what the um, shipping is for this but I just wanted to show you the Franken box and how you can take one box and take a part of another one if it doesn't fit perfectly cut it slide it on Again, if it's a square or rectangle, same process, and put it on this and put it together. And this is this is perfect. So don't be afraid to ship the larger items. Don't be afraid of golf clubs, baseball bats, stuff like that, posters, things that are larger. They These work out really great. Of course, posters, you'd be paying priority mail for it. But it's still, um, if it's a great poster, it's worth priority mail to use these boxes. So that's it. Thanks for stopping by my channel. Please hit the thumbs up if you like this kind of content. Um, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to my channel. I'm hoping to put together some of these little short how-to videos from time to time just showing you some of the stuff that I do and how I package up and ship my orders. And um, oh, by the way, this was um, Macari and I do free shipping on Macari 99% of the time and I ship my um, I print my shipping labels through pirate ship I do not use Macari labels because they're over most of the time they're overpriced so I'd rather save the money for my buyer and of course buyers like free shipping so I just go ahead and do it through pirate ship um, and I can do cubic shipping through pirate ship too so it's just so much easier for me and my buyers in the long run pay because they don't have to pay as much and it's more money in my pocket so that's it thanks for stopping by talk to you guys later I just wanted to follow up to my video here and show you that those golf clubs were 42 inches by six by six. They weighed six pounds, 14 ounces. I'm shipping through Pirate Ship and it's costing me $15.89 to ship those golf clubs that they paid $170 for. So I really like Pirate Ship. Um, I'm, I'm very happy with $15 to ship to Missouri from New York. So just wanted to update you on how much it actually ended up costing to ship.